Good morning. Merry Christmas. It's an awesome, awesome season of year, and what a great day. The day before Christmas, Christmas Eve. We're so glad you're here. Thanks for coming out to be with us this morning. I know many of you have traveled from a long way to come and visit family, and we're so glad you're here. We pray for your safe travels. I know we've got folks from our community that are here today, and we're really glad you're here as well. Thanks for coming out. Lisa and I had the great joy this uh, just about a week ago, a little over a week ago, to welcome our second grandson, our second grandchild, another little boy. And we were over there this weekend to have Christmas with them and to uh, just to be around that baby. And here's a thing that I had forgotten. It's been a long time since we had little ones. I had forgotten how often babies need to be changed. <laughs> that was a, a, a reminder. And then this morning, I was kind of reflecting on just that whole experience, and I realized that Christmas is when we celebrate a baby who came to change us, and that's the good news. That's the great news, that he came in order to change us and to make us what God wants us to be and what we want to be. So we're here to celebrate that, and I'm so, so glad that you're here. We're going to go ahead and take up our collection right now so uh, the plates will pass. And let me tell you a little bit about how our service will go today. We're just going to think about Jesus and his birth and his life. And we're going to explore the story of Jesus from, uh, from prophecy uh, into his birth, into his teaching, into his life, his death, his burial, and his resurrection, and beyond. And we're going to do that in three ways. We'll, we'll do it in song. We will do it in symbol uh, through the Lord's Supper, and a little bit later on, we'll pass the 
a, a, a tray that will have some bread in it. And you are invited to take a piece of that bread and eat it and remember the body of Jesus. And then after that, we'll pass a tray. And the symbol there is a cup. And in that cup is just some grape juice, which is a symbol of the blood of Jesus, the blood that cleans us, that makes us whole, that was sacrificed for us. And you're, again, welcome to share in that part of our ceremony. So we'll, we'll remember the story in, in song, in symbol, and in word. And specifically, the words that we will be hearing this morning are all from Scripture. Every word you'll hear that, uh, that I'll be sharing with you will come straight from God's Word as we tell this story. Well, let's begin with a prayer, and then we'll begin with a song. God, we thank you for sending this child to change us. We're thankful for this story that begins in Genesis and then continues to this day. It travels all through the, the Old Testament, through the prophets, into the Gospels, into the letters, into the Revelation, and then into our own lives. That story continues to flow through eternity, and we are caught up in it this morning. We ask you to bless our time of hearing your word. May your word touch us. May your word change us. May your word heal us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Tell me the story of Jesus. Write on my heart every word. Tell me the story. time is coming, declares the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant I made with their forefathers when I took them by the hand to lead them out of Egypt because they broke my covenant, though I was a husband to them, declares the Lord. This is the covenant I will make with the house of Israel after that time. I will put my law in their minds and write it on their hearts. I will be their God, and they will be my people. No longer will a man teach his brother, saying, Know the Lord, because they will all know me, from the least of them to the greatest, declares the Lord, for I will forgive their wickedness and remember their sins no more. Therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. The virgin will be with child, and will give birth to a son, and will call him Emmanuel, God with us. This is how the birth of Jesus came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph, but before they came together, she was found to be with child through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was a righteous man and did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son and you are to give him the name Jesus because he will save his people from their sins. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree 
that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. And everyone went to his own town to register. So Joseph went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. And while they were there, the time came for the baby to be born. And Mary gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. O little town of Bethlehem, how still we see thee lie. Above thy deep and dreamless sea, the silent stars go by. Yet shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Today, in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths, lying in a manger. And suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to all on whom his favor rests. When the angel left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let's go to Bethlehem. And see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. And so they hurried off, and they found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in a manger. And when they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, 
which were just as they had been told. Silent night, holy night, all is calm. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star in the east and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed and all Jerusalem with him. And then Herod called the Magi secretly, and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, go, make a careful search for the child, and as soon as you find him, report to me, so that I too may worship him. After they heard the king, they went on their way. And the star they had seen in the east went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. And when they saw the star, they were overjoyed. And on coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother, Mary. And they bowed down and worshipped him. And then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold and of incense and of myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country by another route. And Jesus grew in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and people. Fasting alone in the desert, tell of the days that are past, how for our sins he was saved. Tell me the story of Jesus. 
Then Jesus came from Galilee to the Jordan to be baptized by John. But John tried to deter him, saying, I need to be baptized by you, and you come to me? Jesus replied, let it be so. Now it is proper for us to do this to fulfill all righteousness. And then John consented. As soon as Jesus was baptized, he went up out of the water, and at that moment, heaven was opened, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lighting on him, and a voice from heaven said, this is my son whom I love, with him I am well pleased. Now when he saw the crowds, Jesus went up on a mountainside and sat down. His disciples came to him, and he began to teach them, saying, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers. They will be called the sons and daughters of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. You are the salt of the earth. You are the light of the world. A city on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on a stand and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before people that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. But do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal, but store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where moth and rust do not destroy and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter into the kingdom of heaven, but only those who do the will of my Father who is in heaven. Now when Jesus came to the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, who, who do people say that I am? And they replied, well, some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, still others Jeremiah or one of the prophets, but what about you? Who do you say that I am? And Peter answered, you're the Christ, the son of the living God. And from that time on, Jesus began to explain to his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things at the hands of the priests, the, chief, the, the elders, the chief priests, and the teachers of the law, and that he must be killed and on the third day raised to life. Tell of the cross where they nailed him, writhing in anguish and Tell of the grave where they lay Tell how he lived again. Love in that story so tender, clearer than ever I see. Stay Oh,
So on the first day of the week of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, when it was customary to sacrifice the Passover lamb, Jesus' disciples asked him, where do you want us to make preparation for you to eat the Passover? So he sent two of his disciples, telling them, go into the city. A man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him. Say to the owner of the house he enters, the teacher asks, where is my guest room that I may eat the Passover with my disciples? He will show you a large upper room furnished and ready. Make preparations there. The disciples left, went into the city, and found things just as Jesus had told them. So they prepared the Passover. When evening came, Jesus arrived with the twelve. While they were eating, Jesus took bread, gave thanks, and broke it. He gave it to his disciples and said, take it. This is my body. And he took the cup and gave thanks and offered it to them, and they all drank it. This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many. He said to them. Now, when they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Now, Judas, who betrayed him, knew the place, because Jesus had often met there with his disciples. So Jesus, Judas came to the grove, guiding a detachment of soldiers and some officials from the chief priests and Pharisees. They were carrying torches and lanterns and weapons. Jesus, knowing all that was going to happen to him, went out to them and said, Who is it that you want? Jesus of Nazareth, they replied. I am he, Jesus said. Then the detachment of soldiers with its commander and the Jewish officials arrested Jesus. They bound him and brought him first to Annas, who was the father-in-law of Caiaphas, the high priest that year. Caiaphas was the one who had advised the Jews that it would be good if one man died for the people. I cast my mind to Calvary, where Jesus bled and died for me. I see his wounds, his hands, his feet, my Savior on that cursed tree, his body for the bread. Father, we're thankful for this amazing story that is unfolding from your word in our hearing before our eyes. We're thankful for this symbol that we're about to receive, a reminder that you came in the flesh, Emmanuel, God with us that you squeezed all of your divinity into the form of a tiny baby who grew in wisdom and stature and in favor with you and with us, who taught great things, who healed the sick, who cured souls, who walked on water, who cast out demons, who made the blind to see and the deaf to hear. We're thankful for the wisdom that he left us, but more than all of that, we are thankful for the most gruesome day in history. When Jesus hung on a cross for us, his body pierced, his flesh broken, and now you give us this symbol to remind us that you were and are and always will be Emmanuel, God with us. We receive it with gratitude as a gift of your grace, in Jesus' name, amen.
Early in the morning, all of the chief priests and elders of the people came to the decision to put Jesus to death. They bound him, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate, the governor. So Pilate came out to them and asked, what charges are you bringing against this man? If he were not a criminal, they replied, we would not have handed him over to you. Pilate said, take him yourselves, judge him by your own law, but we have no right to execute anyone, the Jews objected. I find no basis for a charge against him, Pilate said, but it is your custom for me to release to you one prisoner at the time of the Passover. Do you want me to release to you the king of the Jews? They shouted back, no, not him. Give us Barabbas. Now, Barabbas had taken part in a rebellion. Let's pray together and thank God for the cup. God, this ceremony that we're engaging in, this one that we do every Sunday, that Christians all over the world do every Sunday, can get old, it can become stale, can become rote. Bless us this morning with a fresh perspective, a new sense that we are all Barabbas, that Jesus has taken our place, that he has died in our stead, that it was his blood that was sacrificed, not our own. As we share this cup, may we become people who are more grateful who are more open, who are more loving, who are more generous, who are more forgiving, because this cup symbolizes that by which we were forgiven. In his name we pray, amen. And then Pilate took Jesus and had him flogged. The soldiers twisted together a crown of thorns and put it on his head. They clothed him 
in a purple robe and went up to him again and again saying, Hail, King of the Jews, and they struck him in the face. Once more Pilate came out and said to the Jews, Look, I'm bringing him out to you to let you know that I find no basis for a charge against him. And when Jesus came out wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe, Pilate said to them, Here is the man. As soon as the chief priests and the officials saw him, they shouted, Crucify! Crucify! If you let this man go, you are no friend of Caesar. Anyone who claims to be a king opposes Caesar. Shall I crucify your king? Pilate asked. We have no king but Caesar, they answered. Finally, Pilate handed him over to be crucified. And so the soldiers took charge of Jesus. Carrying his own cross, he went out to the place of the skull, and here they crucified him, and with him two others, one on each side of Jesus. Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And with that, he breathed his last. Then on the third at break of dawn, the Son of Heaven rose again. O trample death, where is your sting? The angels roar for Christ the King. first day of the week, just after sunrise. Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, Salome, were on their way to the tomb. And they asked each other, who will roll the stone away from the entrance to the tomb? But when they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled away. And as they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in white, sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. Don't be alarmed, he said. You're looking for Jesus, who was crucified. He has risen. He's not here. You see the place where they laid him? But go, tell his disciples and Peter, he's going ahead of you into Galilee. You will see him just as he told you. And then the 11 disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. And, and when they saw him, they worshiped him, but some doubted. And then Jesus came and he said to them, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore go, make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything that I've commanded you. And surely I'm with you always to the very end of the age. And after the Lord Jesus had spoken to them, he was taken up into heaven, and he sat at the right hand of the throne of God. Then on the third at break of dawn, the Son of Heaven rose again. O trampled death, where is your sting? The angels roar for Christ the King shall return. Oh! 
disciples went out and preached everywhere, and the Lord worked with them and confirmed his word by the signs that accompanied it. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, and all are justified freely by his grace through the redemption that came by Jesus Christ. And without faith, it's impossible to please God because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. For it is with your heart that you believe and are justified, and it is with your mouth that you confess and are saved. Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. The promise is for you and your children and all who are far off, for all whom the Lord our God will call. Don't you know that all of us who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were therefore buried with him through baptism into death in order that, just as Christ was raised from the dead to the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to God. This is your spiritual act of worship. Do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good pleasing and perfect will. Now all has been heard. Here is the conclusion of the matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of men and women. For God will bring every deed into judgment, including every hidden thing, whether it's good or evil. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us. For to us, a child is born. To us, a son is given. And the government will be on his shoulders. And he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. Let's stand. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive her King.
couple of things and we will be out of here for the rest of your Christmas Eve. There are still some poinsettias left in the windowsills and up front. Please don't trample each other, but please take them. Anybody who wants one is welcome to take one home for the last two days of Christmas here. Also, no class this Wednesday night. Next Sunday, again, no class. We will have a regular service here at 10 a.m. And that is it. I hope you have an outstanding time with family and friends. Remember the Christ child, Emmanuel, God with us. Let's close in prayer. Let's pray. God, we thank you for your story that you share with us and the birth of a child saving the world. And God, I just pray that uh, we are able to see past the lights and the presence and um, just see uh, the Savior that came to save us and is for us. All right, God, we just pray that we live out your message in our lives um, and we pray that um, we can love more and uh, just be Jesus to the people around us. And it's in your name we pray, amen.